With the announcement of Pokemon ZA, I felt that urge to start over from the beginning. So as of right now, I'm currently playing through Pokemon Yellow again. I'm not a humongous fan of Gen 1 Kanto, but I recently got a brand new custom-made Game Boy Advance SP that reminded me of my Game Boy Color I had when I was young, and I couldn't resist the temptation of wanting to play some old Pokemon games on it. I had recently played Pokemon Emerald, if you were familiar with my video from a few months ago, but I was going through my cartridges and saw Yellow, and I thought to myself, why not? Plus, Pikachu in Yellow is actually kind of adorable, especially when you chat with it as it follows you behind. So today, I felt like showing off the team I am currently using while traversing this old version of Kanto with Pikachu at my side. With that said, let's get started. Also, if you enjoy lo-fi music and want a place to chill or study, then head over to Luna's World. I'm currently working on a special project involving Luna as well. I will leave Luna's World in the description below. So, with any Pokemon Yellow team, I'm using Pikachu. Pikachu isn't exactly great, but the Pokemon Yellow Pikachu is actually really fun to use. Especially if you tread it over the Gen 2. The reason is because it's holding the light ball. In Yellow though, Pikachu's stats are the same. It just has a different level up moveset. Some people ditch Pikachu, but me, like a lot of other players, have a tradition where they just use their starter Pokemon no matter what. I don't know if it's just me, but a team doesn't feel complete without using a starter. So no matter what, unless it's a Nuzlocke and my starter dies, I tend to always use it the whole way through. But yeah, Pikachu is the most obvious choice for playing Pokemon Yellow, so I'm just gonna keep this entry short. Next up, I of course needed a Pokemon for Brock. In Yellow, I had the option of Butterfree, Mankey, or Nidoran. Nidoking is of course an absolute unit in Gen 1 if you've all ever seen Gen 1 speedruns. But I've used Nidoking so many times that I just didn't really feel like using it. Still, this thing is super fun to use no matter what gen you play. So if you use Nidoking, you're in for a ride. And I mean, look at this coverage. Coverage is pretty amazing if you ask me. I decided on choosing Mankey because, well, Primeape is awesome. Sucks I don't have an Iolipe, but hey, I can always do another Scarlet and Violet team some point in the future. Unlike Mankey in Pokemon Red and Blue, in Yellow, Mankey can be found on Route 22 and can learn Low Kick via Level Up, perfect for taking on Brock. I decided on keeping Mankey as a long-term member. I will say Gen 1 move pulls are dog doo-doo, but we work with what we got. The fact I have to say Submission is its best stab move says something. 80 accuracy, 80 damage, and recoil. Unless you want low kick, have fun. It still gets some decent physical attacks outside of stab though, so it's not completely bad. It is for an in-game run, so it's not like it matters much anyways. Primeape's design is also top-notch. Up third is a flyer you've seen me talk about a lot, being Firo. Typically, I would use Charizard for a Gen 1 run, especially because in yellow, it can actually get fly, whereas in red and blue, it does not. Usually when I run through yellow, I tend to use all three Kanto starters, but I felt like changing it up this time. Firo is a fun flyer to run, and it's been an old reliable in the early gen since I started playing when I was a kid. In Gen 1 too, at least it gets flying stab with drill peck at level 34. I'm also going to be cheesy and run some Hyper Beam shenanigans as well. No recharge after taking down an opponent is always a fun mechanic to abuse. For a Gen 1 move pull, it's actually not bad at all. In Gen 3, it's actually a lot better though, considering it gets access to the return TM. To be honest, normal stab isn't completely needed though, so Drill Peck should suffice. Still, Hyper Beam for straight power is fun. Okay. So for this next one, I will be completely honest and say I have never used it before. In Gen 1, that is. In this run of yellow, I decided to give Gyarados a try. And I gotta say, it's a blast. What's wild about Gyarados is the fact that in Gen 1, its special stats are merged. Its base 100 makes Gyarados a pretty formidable water type to use. What's also wild is with this 100 special stat, you get to use all of Gyarados' insane coverage. In later gens, I've never been able to enjoy Gyarados' special attack stat as I am now. Getting Bubble Beam for Misty and mowing things down was definitely fun. 
And Gyarados gets to use fun Hyper Beam hacks like Fero does. Only with Gyarados, it gets it at level 52. But at least that leaves one less Hyper Beam TM for you to buy. So that is a plus. And I say it's a plus because Gyarados can do monstrous damage in the Elite Four. The biggest pain with Gyarados though, like every one of us knows, especially in the earlier gens, is the hike to level 20 with Magikarp. I kid you not, I could not wait for Magikarp to get Tackle at level 15. When it got Tackle, at least I didn't have to switch train on wild mods. Even then, it still took ages to level up to 20 because Magikarp and Tackle is complete dog crap. But eventually, I made it work, and the hike to Gyarados was well worth it, just like the other experiences I had with it. So a tad earlier, I mentioned me using all the starters in Pokemon Yellow in almost every run I do. Well, I didn't use all the Kanto starters this time, but I did happen to use one, aka my favorite starter of all time, Venusaur. Some of you are still under the impression that the Meganium line is my favorite. That actually changed a few years ago. Venusaur has always been up there, just not at number one all the time. Anywho, I use Venusaur in pretty much 90% of the playthroughs I do in Pokemon Yellow. For one, there's of course its incredible design, but the other is because of the fun crit hacks with Razor Leaf. Who doesn't love seeing a critical hit 90% of the time you play? Venusaur with that crit ratio alone is powerful enough to be a contender for this team's MVP. Real quick though, before I end this entry, let's flip back to its Gen 1 art design real quick. I just love this original art of Venusaur, and I remember seeing this style of art when I was a kid. It's absolutely nostalgic and magnificent. And lastly, this is a mod I haven't used in a long time. And for once, I actually have access to trade evolutions for one of these runs, considering I do have an old Game Boy Color Link cable and like two other Game Boy Advance SPs. I was also tired of using Duck Trio and Nidoking as my ground type, so I decided on Golem this time. It took me until I got to Rock Tunnel to make this final decision. And luckily, I had held on to my Dig TM. I'll tell you guys what's freaking sick though. At level 36, it learns Earthquake via level up, you get that power relatively early on, and I am all for it. It is slow, but this rock meatball is a defensive behemoth. Rock Slide is also accessible, and it can be found by giving the girl on the rooftop of the Celadon department store a soda pop. If you do plan to use Golem though, you can obviously catch Geodude as early as Mount Moon. Don't make the same decision as I did and wait till the last second. That was my new team for Kanto, Pokemon Yellow Edition. What'd you guys think? Did you like the team? Also, what's your favorite team you've ever used for Gen 1? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'm gonna Hyper Beam Nuke the Elite Four with Gyarados.